Hello, and welcome once again to Got Mike. I am your host, Mike S. Miller, uh, artist of the covers of all of the Game of Thrones comic books coming out the past few years, as well as the A Clash of Kings, and uh, one of the main artists on the Injustice book series from DC Comics. Today, we're going to be delving into a little bit of what uh, Sophie Turner has revealed about the, um, the last episode of Game of Thrones Season 8. Uh, here on IGN, news article just came out today, and says, Game of Thrones, Sophie Turner thinks series finale will divide fans. Game of Thrones actress Sophie Turner, who plays Sansa Stark on the HBO show, thinks the series finale will split fans down the middle. Yeah, pretty much everything in Game of Thrones splits fans down the middle. <laughs> so I don't know that that's really news. So maybe it's kind of a kind of a weak news day for Game of Thrones, but we'll go with it anyways. During a phone interview today to promote the first trailer for Dark Phoenix, wherein she reprises her role as X-Men member Jean Grey, Turner revealed her reaction to reading the script for the series finale. And if you didn't watch it last night, we did post up a video of reactions to the Dark Phoenix promo trailer. Uh, please do go back, check that out. Also, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe it. A lot of tears, she says, I think. You know, as an actor, I w it was really satisfying. I think for everyone, everyone's storylines, to be able to act out the way that all it all ends, it was just really satisfying for us, Turner said. Who knows if it will be satisfying for the fans. I think a lot of fans will be disappointed, and a lot of fans will be over the moon, I think. I think. She thinks a lot, she says again. I think it will be really interesting to see people's reactions, but for me, reading the script was... Just like heartbreaking to read at the very final page of the script, it just says, End Game of Thrones. That was really emotional. Turner teased Sansa's arc during the eighth and final season, saying, And I'm not sure if this, uh, this doesn't qualify for a breach of contract, because she says she kind of takes ownership over who she is, ownership over who she is, and what she stands for. Over the course of the series, she's been completely unaware of what she wants, who she really is, and at the end of the season, I feel she is the most self-assured character in the show. She just let it be known, essentially, that Sansa survives till the end. And contractually, they're not allowed to say anything that spoils anything in the show. So, hmm, is this a gray arc? area, or was everyone pretty much assured Sansa was going to stay alive till the last episode anyways? Anyways, with what Dark, with Dark Phoenix possibly the last X-Men movie, given Disney's pending acquisition of 20th Century Fox, uh, Turner, blah blah blah, Turner was open and op optimistic about what the future has in store in regard to Dark Phoenix and doing any more X-Men movies, blah blah blah, that has nothing to do with Game of Thrones. Turner said that going, that saying goodbye to Sansa Stark and Game of Thrones was really bittersweet. I'm really excited to be able to have every year I would kind of plan out six, seven, eight months of my time to be like, I dedicated... Man, she sounds like, maybe I should be saying this like, uh, really bittersweet. I really, I'm really excited to be able to have like every year I would plan out uh, six, seven, eight months of my time to be like, dedicated that towards X-Men or towards Game of Thrones. Now I have all this sort of freed up time to do... Oh, sorry. This is getting bad. She speaks ineloquently, but she's young. I'm not going to give her too much crap, even though I already did. Anyways, uh, freed up time to do kind of different projects that would normally shoot over the, the time that either X-Men or Game of Thrones would shoot. It's really exciting. I see a lot of opportunities and getting ton more scripts, which is just like fueling my passion, so I'm excited, but of course it's hard to say goodbye, especially to Game of Thrones. I've been on it for nearly a decade, but it's definitely difficult. Yeah, um, I was going back and watching, uh, I watched the first episode of Game of Thrones today uh, in preparation for tomorrow night's night, Night's Watch. Um, we're going to do a re-read and a re, uh, re-watch of the first episode and the adjoining chapters in the books to discuss, or as a launching pad for discussion, at any rate. And, um, yeah, going back and seeing all those kids, they were just kids. Sansa was, like, you know, 13, although I think she was actually older 
I mean the the actress Sophie. I think she was older, but you know she's supposed to be thirteen in the in the show, which I believe in the books she was ten or eleven, because Bran was ten, but in the books he was seven or eight. Oh, maybe it was only two years. So maybe she was supposed to be. Anyways, <laughs> I don't want to get into the mud mud too much. But along with this, because it is a a, a Sansa article. I thought I would show and go through a couple of the uh, images, a couple of the covers where I did feature Sansa for the Game of Thrones comics. Honestly, one of my least favorite characters, definitely my least favorite, Stark. And this is the, the cover of issue 5 of Game of Thrones where she has to make a choice. Her beloved Joffrey, um, or the truth, her sister's truth, which is the truth. And uh, and she's just terrible, terrible. She she makes the wrong choice, betrays her own family, and gets her dog killed in the process. A not her dog, her dire wolf. Lady is uh, suffers the consequence of her uh, ineptitude, basically in a nutshell. And so yeah, I never liked her character, and uh, didn't really care that she made it to the end of the show. And then this is the you know moment on the on the bridge in the show where um where joffrey smacks her and then the hound shows his first truly like tender moment um i never understood on the show why they made the wrong side of his head burned uh in the in the book it's the left side of his face that is burned uh but in the show it's the right side of his face never understood it still don't understand it one of those things that didn't seem to make any difference uh, other than just sticking the prosthetic on the other side of his face. And I did uh, stick George R. R. Martin's head up here on the throne, on the uh, on the spike as well, next to Ned and uh, Old Nan's heads. So let me see something real quick. So uh, let me let me go in really fast to see if there's any other. Um, I thought there was one other thing. I didn't want to go in and do that. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of the Game of Thrones fans uh, or, or news items are just you know this. <laughs> so it is a really light Game of Thrones day. But guys, really, I do hope that you can um, make your way to back to this channel tomorrow night. I don't just do Got Mike episodes. We do have a roundtable discussion. Um, currently it's on Friday nights. Uh, we may or may not keep it on Friday nights, but uh, this week we're going to have um, Quinn from Ideas of Ice and Fire. If he, uh, if he does manage to make it, he said he could make it on Friday. And hopefully that will remain true. And also um, one other, a new guest, Gray Area, this Gray Area. Uh, she also has a popular Game of Thrones YouTube channel, so those two, uh, John Malin will be back, of course, just to be um, a thorn in my side. And um, maybe a couple of other uh, additional guests, and again, the topic will be Episode 1, Season 1, and the adjoining chapters in the books. Um, and then where the where the discussion goes from there, who knows? But that will be tomorrow night, Friday, uh, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So uh, yeah, be here, please. And if you haven't already, do like, do subscribe, check out my other videos. There's there's some other Game of Thrones stuff. There's also a lot of me drawing and talking. Um, oh oh yeah, the art contest known as Drawn and Quartered several, uh, a group of professional comic book artists uh, competing for your love and favor. So, once again, thank you for being here, and Valar Mogolis.